The film begins with an American Special Forces unit apprehending Kazakhstan's dictator, General Ivan Radek. Radek's regime had caused enormous bloodshed in Kazakhstan, and there were reports that his nuclear weapons stockpile would have plunged the world into a second Cold War. President James Marshall and Russian President Petrov worked together to capture him. Several weeks after Radek's capture, President Marshall travels to Moscow with his wife Grace and daughter Alice. While Marshall is praised for his assistance in breaking Radek's grip on Kazakhstan, he surprises everyone, including his own men, by deviating from his planned speech. Marshall claims that in light of the number of people killed in Kazakhstan, they were too slow to act and vows that this will not happen again. Marshall, his family, and his men are then returned to Air Force One, which departs for Washington, D.C. unbeknownst to the president or anyone else, a rogue Secret Service agent named Gibbs has secretly allowed several men who support General Roddick onto the plane. After the plane reaches cruising altitude, Gibbs kills several agents in critical defensive positions, and the hijackers, led by Igor Korshinov, don bulletproof vests and collect Secret Service weaponry. Korshinov and his men seize control of the plane quickly, killing several Secret Service agents and, in the chaos, Marshall is ordered into an escape pod in the cargo hold. The pilots of Air Force One attempt an emergency landing at Ramstein Air Base, but are killed when one of Korshinov's men takes control of the plane. As an escort, a group of F-15s is sent after Air Force One. Korshinov directs the plane to Kazakhstan and makes a direct call to the White House, where Vice President Catherine Bennett and Defense Secretary Walter Dean listen to Korshinov's demands. Korshinov demands the release of General Radek in exchange for the execution of a hostage every half hour until his demands are met. Soon after, the president's escape pod is discovered, but he is not inside. Marshall hid aboard the plane during the firefight in order to save his family, which neither the White House nor Korshinov are aware of. Korshinov believes the president escaped Air Force One, while the White House believes Korshinov and his men murdered Marshall. Korshinov makes it clear in his communications with White House staff and military leaders that he believes Marshall is a coward for abandoning his family and staff, and he taunts the vice president. Marshall attempts to locate his family, but is nearly assassinated by a henchman before being killed. Marshall returns to the cargo hold, where he finds a cellular phone and dials the White House switchboard. When the switchboard operator questions Marshall's claim to be the president, he demands that she trace the call. As she realizes Marshall is who he claims to be, one of Korshinov's henchmen tracks him down. Marshall sneaks the phone into his pocket. When the call is routed to the White House Situation Room, Marshall issues an indirect order for one of the F-15s escorting the plane to fire on them. Bennett relays the order, and the blast shockwave knocks the henchman off balance, allowing Marshall to overpower and murder him. Marshall then addresses Bennett and the others directly, claiming that they cannot give up Radek, and that they must find a way to land the plane. Meanwhile, Korshinov has learned of the murder of two of his men, and believes there is a Secret Service agent hiding in the cargo hold. He turns on the plane's speaker system, after bringing Deputy Press Secretary Melanie Mitchell to the cockpit, threatening to kill Melanie if the person in the cargo hold does not surrender. Marshall refuses to comply, and Melanie's execution can be heard throughout the plane. Marshall notices a punctured milk container in the cargo hold and decides to dump the plane's fuel, which should force the plane to land. Korshinov dispatches two of his men when the plane detects a fuel leak. Marshall nearly kills them, but as they go to fix the fuel leak, Marshall sneaks up to the main cabin and captures another henchman. The two then gain access to the hostage-taking room. Marshall emphasizes that he is not leaving without his family, but rather to save the hostages. Major Caldwell proposes that they can get off the plane, if they can get the plane to descend to 15,000 feet, and use the parachutes in the cargo hold. The White House receives the secret fax message, the fax and phone lines are separate, shortly after Korshinov calls to request a mid-air refueling. Bennett tries to negotiate a hostage release once more by requesting that the plane land for refueling, but Korshinov's threat to kill a passenger every minute until they are refueled forces her to cave in. Bennett is soon forced to deal with the situation in a different way. According to CNN, there is a rumor that Air Force One has crashed. Bennett appears in the White House press room to dispel rumors and, for the first time, 
informs the public about the hijacking of the plane. A KC-10 is dispatched and refuels Air Force One shortly thereafter. Both planes fly down to 15,000 feet. Caldwell and others open the cargo hold doors, and a large number of people jump from the plane, their parachutes deployed. However, the cargo doors are seen opening in the plane's cockpit, and several of Korshinov's men are dispatched to investigate. When they discover that the door is locked, one of them uses an oxygen tank to blast the lock, causing a number of people to fall out of the plane. The unexpected blast disrupts the refueling effort and the KC-10 struggles to break free. The fuel leaking from the plane, however, ignites and the KC-10 explodes. Marshall is sucked out of the cargo hold while clinging to the cargo door. Caldwell is able to pull Marshall to safety, but they are quickly kidnapped by Korshinov's men. Igor then calls the White House to announce that he now has the president's attention, and instructs the F-15 escort to divert once they enter Kazakhstani airspace. Bennett immediately fulfills this request. Marshall is brought before Korshinov, who beats him and demands that he call Petrov and ask him to release Radek, promising that they can go free once the general is released. Marshall refuses until Korshinov threatens Alice with death. To save his family, Marshall caves and requests Radek's release from Petrov. Korshinov explains further that he lied to Marshall as Rodek's release is broadcast over the plane's PA system. He also intends to hand over Marshall and his family to Rodek. Simultaneously, Marshall steals a piece of glass and cuts through his bindings. Marshall then tries to subdue Korshinov, but is nearly killed by one of Korshinov's henchmen. Marshall's chief of staff takes the bullet meant for him. Marshall then manages to take out the gunman, but Igor escapes to the cargo hold with Grace during the ensuing struggle. Marshall discovers Korshinov wearing a parachute, while also tossing the remaining chutes out the open hold door. Korshinov jokes that he has won despite the fact that he has no pilot and no parachute. His brief victory gives Grace enough time to distract him before Marshall tackles Korshinov. Marshall wraps a strap around Korshinov's neck before activating his parachute as they struggle. Marshall yells angrily at Korshinov, get off my plane, and releases the terrorist. Korshinov's neck is snapped by the strap as he is dragged out the cargo hold door. Marshall is able to contact Petrov and prevent Rodek's release. However, when ordered to stop, Rodek flees and is killed. Marshall obtains advice from a White House friend on how to pilot Air Force One, with Caldwell serving as co-pilot. The plane is heading for a Turkish airfield when it is intercepted by some rogue MiG fighters piloted by Rodek supporters. F-15s that had turned back at Kazakhstan's borders move in to intercept the MiGs. A fierce dogfight ensues, with the American pilot destroying several members of the Kazakh squadron and forcing the remainder to flee. One American pilot gives his life to prevent a missile from hitting the tail of Air Force One. The victory, however, is fleeting. During the battle, Air Force One lost an engine and suffered significant damage to its tail gear, preventing a safe landing. With no way to land and the plane rapidly running out of fuel, AC-130 Hercules is diverted to Air Force One for a mid-air Zeppelin rescue. Despite efforts to save Marshall first, he insists on having his wife and daughter transferred first. The injured agent is the third person across, but due to the continued engine failure and rapid descent of Air Force One, only one more person can be rescued. Marshall refuses to abandon the other men, but his words are cut short when Agent Gibbs shoots the Zeppelin attendant and kills Caldwell. Both Gibbs and Marshall compete for the Zeppelin strap, with Marshall just barely securing it when the Zeppelin breaks free from the doorframe, leaving Gibbs aboard the plane as it crashes and breaks up in the Caspian Sea. Marshall is still struggling to secure his Zeppelin strap as the Hercules crew reels him in. The pilot changes the plane's call sign from Liberty 2 to 4 to Air Force 1. Once he is safely aboard, this title applies to any aircraft that the president is aboard. As Marshall is reunited with his family, the F-15 squadron returns to flanking positions as the first family is escorted home.